let's see if this is working. I was able to make it on time this week. Oh my gosh. Just make sure that the audio hits. Um, in the meantime, hope you're doing well. Uh, got some community inspired. Excellent. Got some community inspired um, questions this week, actually by the same person. So um, we'll be diving into NRF 9160 specific things this week. Um, I generally try to keep it uh, kind of generic, but in this case, we're, we're talking about the NRF 9160. So let's jump in. I got the chat. Let's do this. And if you haven't already subscribed, um, leave a comment, hit the like button. Let me know the things that you'd like to see on these live sessions. Um, they're every week and I just go over questions that people have in the community, things that they want to get done in Zephyr, but maybe they don't understand or like they, they need more clarification on how it works. So, um, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm doing every week. So, uh, really happy that, uh, a lot of the inspiration comes from the community, which is great because it's just like. I can only think of so much, but let's uh, let's dive into this uh, this this week's questions. Um, so, how do you send a uh, AT commands from C firmware? And this is from um, Cchoid two two nine one five, and um, we'll go right into it. So, yes, you can send AT commands. Uh, to the modem firmware in the NRF-9160 in your main applications manually. Um, Nordic has spent a lot of time in their SDK, uh, which is just a module in Zephyr, to wrap around these AT commands, so you don't necessarily have to. Um, most of the most popular functionality, that's already done. For some other things like SMS, unless they've updated it re recently, um, things like that don't really exist yet. There's no APIs for that, but um, we'll just go over kind of the idea of like how uh, it works down the, down the line so you can kind of see uh, the, the flow from the API down to the uh, AT commands. Uh, at the top there, you can see um, if you're using NFRN 160, this should look pretty familiar. This is just enabling your uh, LTE link control. So enabling features for LTE, uh, auto init and connect, blah, blah, blah. But in the back end, it turns on AT command, AT command parser and um, AT notifications. And um, these, are the, these are the underlying um, libraries that allows you to communicate back and forth between the, uh, the um, modem firmware in the NRF 9160. Um, here are some other like modules that basically use the, that underlying library, but you can see like LTE link control modem info. So you're getting info from the modem. Um, you can also, if your heart desires, you can actually uh, set up your device to allow it to receive AT commands and actually implement your own custom ones, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've, I've done that myself on a couple projects now. Uh, just allows you to just create your own commands so you can set uh, authentication information, things that are custom to an application makes it really uh, handy because you can also issue all the other AT commands that you normally would in addition to the uh, custom ones that you have. So uh, here are the LTE link control functions. Um, these should look familiar for anybody who's played with under funding with 60s. Uh, these are just some examples of the, these are the high level commands and you can, we can kind of dive in lower. So I went in and I looked at the LC normal command. Um, you can see it's running another API, which is called the LTE LC func mode set, which is just a function mode set, which is the ATC fun command. So if you dive into that particular function and go all the way down to the bottom, you can see here's the ATC fun, uh, AT command, and you can see AT, the AT command write function, which is that AT command library. So down in the depths of the firmware, you actually are just writing AT commands to the modem firmware for the NRF 9160. Um, so here is an example of 
of, of actually using that library, that lower level library to write some commands. <clears throat> this in particular is, uh, these are a couple commands to actually send an SMS message um, in the SMS uh, sample, which I've also included in the description. So you can like, you can down, or you can go to it on GitHub and just check out uh, the commands that are being used there in more context. But uh, you can see those, uh, we're iterating over those commands and uh, writing them with the AT command write with callback. So there's some options there. You can just plain off write and then whatever, you don't care about the response or if you want the response, you can use the callback. So there are some, there's some ways to do it. Uh, you can use the API or you can, you can do, uh, do your own thing and um, use the AT commands and dive in. Like I said, some of the functionality, there's a lot of moving parts on the NF9160 and uh, Nordic has just slowly turning out, they have the hardware, it's just like slowly turning out the support and the firmware and the libraries to actually make all the inner functionality work on the NR for any one sixty feather. Hardware is the easy part to some extent. Uh, the hard part is actually getting all the functionality working the way you want. So uh, your choices, you can roll your own, use Nordic's uh, built-in libraries, and uh, check out the SMS sample. Like I said, uh, it's in the description box below. I already a link to it. So next. Question again. It's a uh, by the same um, community member, uh, C. Choi uh, um, Is there a quick, easy, succinct way to get the GPS position? Um, and he essentially, essentially was trying to the GPS library or like GPS commands. Harry GPS library a little less Harry. It's like, is there an easy way to just like on off GPS? Give me position. Um, so I will show what there is. So like I mentioned, those the AT commands can be hairy. Um, Nordic has their AGPS module, um, which takes, simplifies it a little bit. And then, um, I actually kind of made a, um, a, I, I also linked to the AGPS, uh, the GPS module and, uh, my own code. So what I did with my own code is I wrapped all that stuff and just made it simple, like start stuff, or uh, start, stop. And it, um, there's also some stuff for AGPS, uh, but that's uh, han a handy feature, but even if you're not using a GPS, three calls. So uh, we'll jump into that particular uh, aspect of things. So one thing you have to do is make sure that you, in the configuration, if you're setting up the LT, um, the device, that you enable GPS, number one. Uh, number two is uh, most of the time you're using the, the AGPS module, Nordic supplied. Um, I use Supple, but there's a couple of different ways of getting AGPS data. It increases the speed that, or decreases the speed it takes to get a fix. It gives you like kind of that background inf background data that normally you'd have to download from the GPS satellites. So yes, literally um, when you are trying to get a fix, your device, if it doesn't have HTTPS data, it's actually downloading that data over very, very, very slow one-way data link, um, which is cool. But uh, and so those are kind of like the background configuration things that you might want to consider um, depending on the mode. So in um, in Ordix GPS module, um, in Nordix GPS module, we're getting the device. So the um, Nordisk device is just like any other device, the GPS module, you're getting it by using that particular binding name, which is the NRF9160 underscore GPS. And then um, in, in their library is GPS underscore init, and then you give it the device, and then also the handler. The handler gives you all the, the events and data as it's processing. Um, so it's very, that's the place where you're gonna get the GPS fixed data, or you're gonna get informa information about if it's started or stopped or anything like that. Um, but you can see this whole GPS handler. And this is like, this is me stripping everything out, but you can, you can imagine that this can get pretty hairy pretty fast. Um, the ones that were probably most, in, that I've always been interested in is the started, stopped, timeout, and PVT fix. Those are probably the most important ones. Um, there's also like the eGPS request, um, Again, I'm not going to touch on that too much, but it will, when you start it, it'll 
it'll say, hey, I need a GPS data. Can you provide it? You can either provide it or just let it try to get a fix by itself. So um, on, my, on, the own, on my own API, this is, I would just kind of put all those pieces that I just described within, um, within this app GPS code. And I put the description of the link to that and down below. Um, but literally, like I was saying, it's like set up, start, stop. Um, in this particular instance, I think I am using the event manager that I kind of described um, a bunch of uh, live sessions ago. So uh, it might not 100% work. Um, I, I put it out there as a kind of a reference design rather than a library that you can just like take wholesale and put in. It's actually part of an app. It's part of the uh, tracker app. So it's not exactly like a library that you could just like take it and start using, but it should give you an idea of like how to, um, how I use the, the Nordic uh, GPS library to get the GPS data. So um, you have some options on the, F9, um, on the NF9160. You can use Nordic's library. Um, you could take it, uh, and use inspiration from my own or create your own depending on your needs. And um, again, all that stuff is in the description box below. All right. Well, that was a quickie. Dang, 12 minutes. Um, I don't see any questions. So both of these concepts is like Nordic took a lot of time to abstract away kind of the down and dirty modem firmware communication between between the app processor and the modem firmware, um, the two cores, and uh, just it, uh, their libraries for the most part make it easier. Uh, if you spend a lot of time in it, it's like, ah, not a big deal. But for someone coming over, there's a lot of stuff in Zephyr. It's like, this is not, why? Like, I just want to toggle an LED. I just want to toggle GPIO. I just want to get, get it fixed. I just want to print something. Um, and there's a lot of extra setup and things that are there. And if you don't understand what they are, you don't understand the advantages. Um, so, uh, hope this one was helpful. I hope you have uh, a great rest of your week. And, um, of course, if you haven't already, uh, please uh, send me a message if you have ideas for things you want to see be covered. I know there's some things. I just got another message about protobuf on Zephyr. So, maybe we'll be doing that next week. Um, so stay tuned and uh, thanks for being here and we'll see